choose to die in that mine, that's how I'm going to die. You know, I'll die providing for my family. Colway's West Virginia. I mean, we're one of four states that's in the black uh, in the last fiscal year. Welcome to West Virginia, the mountain state, a land full of coal and a coal mining tradition that dates back hundreds of years. Today, West Virginia is the leader in the United States underground coal production and is second in overall coal production, trailing only Wyoming. Coal is vital to the economy of West Virginia and is an essential fossil fuel that is used to meet the energy needs of the entire United States. Simply put, coal powers America. I used to think my daddy was a black man With script enough to buy the company store But now he goes down with empty pockets And Lord is faith. West Virginians have long embraced the coal mining industry because of its great importance to the state. This has created a coal mining culture that holds coal miners in a high regard for the sacrifices that they make for their families. The coal mining lifestyle, which involves working a very rigorous and dangerous job for long hours, has brought about a great sense of pride among coal miners and their families. This pride contributes to the coal mining heritage and miners throughout West Virginia do their best to celebrate this heritage. One town in southern West Virginia makes a special effort to show their pride and appreciation for coal miners. Madison, West Virginia in Boone County is home to the annual West Virginia Coal Festival, which helps people celebrate the coal mining heritage. Madison, nicknamed Gateway of the Coal Fields, is especially important to the coal industry because of its location as a main route through the southern West Virginia coal fields. Okay. Boone County, named after the legendary frontiersman Daniel Boone, is where coal was first discovered in West Virginia in 1742. Boone County remains one of the top coal producing counties in the state. As of 2010, Boone County continues to lead the West Virginia mining industry in highest total tonnage of coal produced, number of coal mines, highest employment by county, and most coal reserves. On behalf of the City of Madison, the Mayor, and all the City Council members, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our City of Madison for the 18th Annual West Virginia Coal Festival. Each June, thousands of people gather in Madison for a week-long celebration of the coal mining heritage. There are many events and activities that take place during the week-long festival. It's with a heavy heart that we uh, are here tonight to Pay tribute to those who lost their lives since the last coal festival in 2010. Uh, a miner's memorial day service day. is held in front of the Boone County Courthouse. This service is held in remembrance of the miners that have lost their lives the in the state of West Virginia last since the last festival. A beauty pageant is also held in order to crown each year's Miss Coal. The mine machinery equipment display is set up across from the courthouse. This display is one of the only of its kind in the United States and is a great opportunity for coal miners to bring their families out and show them the equipment that they use in the mines each day.
The lighting of the eternal flame is also done during the memorial service. This flame is located next to the coal miner statue. Once the flame is lit, it burns for the remainder of the festival. Each evening, the Madison sky lights up with a festive atmosphere as a carnival is held right across from the downtown area. The award-winning Coal Heritage Museum is conveniently located in downtown Madison for people to come and check out displays, exhibits, and some of the various artifacts that help people learn the history and appreciate the culture of coal mining in West Virginia. Uh, the, the museum here, the Coal Museum, uh, we, we just wanted to keep our rich coal heritage alive. And uh, The museum was started by the Boone County Development Authority in 1994. We came up with the idea to start a festival in downtown Madison and the museum kind of ties in with the festival. Keeping our history alive is what we're after. And uh, we, we, we feel like that with, with all the public uh, coming in by during the coal festival and during the course of the year, uh, that uh, you know we, we we have a we have a showcase of our history here in the county, and uh, we have visitors uh, from 25 different states every year, 26, 27 states come by during the coal festival alone during the week of the coal festival, and uh, we we have over 2,000 people come through. We document all that. Yeah, would you like me to show any memorabilia that you have here, or <laughs> anything that? What, your favorite stuff you have? Or? Well, not necessarily, I guess, but uh, uh, this is a safety battery right here that you wear on your hip with a safety belt. And that's something that's a safety feature. These safety lamps here, these are all from foreign countries, South America, or uh, different countries overseas. And ours here is, uh, there's one of ours right there, the band room. That's ours that we use in our country. This is mine, people you're looking at in the picture up here. This right here you're seeing is what we call the C Civilian Conservation Corps. Well, we're proud people and we like to show everybody the machinery we run. Uh, we like to take our kids out to a carnival. Uh, we have booths up and down here. I, I have a booth for the church. The other churches work with me. Uh, we let people know of our faith. Uh, and, and we just have fun, both union and non-union together. I mean, we're one big family down here. Now let's introduce some of the people we met at the Coal Festival. Alrighty, well, I'm Wes Harris, and uh, I'm paper trained as a sociologist at Ohio University many years ago. I uh, also spent time in the coal mines a while back, uh, a certified underground coal miner. And these days, primarily, I'm teaching uh, right off of my farm in northern West Virginia, central West Virginia. And my real claim to fame is I found William C. Blizzard and helped him get When Miners March published. So I do a lot of history around the uh, early mine wars, what they call the mine wars, actually we call it the Great West Virginia Mine War, 1890 to the present these days. It makes more sense to view it as one war. Larry okay. I'm the secretary treasurer for the foundation that operates the museum and also the secretary and publicist for the West Virginia Coal Festival. Okay. This is R.B. Foster, memorabilia here in the Coal Museum in Madison. I began mining back in my younger years. I grew up in a coal mining community in Van and uh, was in a large family of people who were all coal miners. I went to work at an early age back in 1938. I worked at various coal mines over the years, but the early years. My name is John Hart and I live in Logan, West Virginia. I work here in Boone County uh, on a surface mines. I've worked roughly 30, 20, 30 years in the mines. I started underground in, in 32 inch coal. Uh, put myself through college, got a degree in mining, got a degree in electrical, A1 certification. Uh, I've pretty much been in the mining industry all my life, or an industry related to the mining industry. For every one coal miner down here. I'm so. Mary Ann. I'm from Boone County. I live in a family of five coal miners. Well, five brothers who are coal miners. My father is a coal miner as well. My name's Brandon Shippey. Uh, I work at High Valley Coal Company and we mine coal for about four months.
How proud are you of it? I'm very proud. I was a coal miner all those years. Coal miners are proud people. They, they are hardworking people. They uh, they take great pride. I work union and non-union, and, and the, the miners themselves work the same. They want to mine coal. They want to make a living for their families. Uh, they are civic oriented. Uh, they like ball in this area. They like ball in Logan. Uh, the church going people. Uh, they're just hard working people. And by hard working, I mean a lot of them, like myself, we work 10, 12 hour days, six days a week. I go from the days of hand loading of coal, loading by the ton, until the days that mining began to be mechanized. And then I did that for a long, long number of years until I had worked in mining 41 years before I retired. It was an enjoyable life, it was a hard life, but it was a very wonderful life for anybody to grow up and be familiar with. Uh, pretty much like, like the job and stuff, everything, I mean, kind of to help a venture, good time and stuff, everything like that. You'll look out after each other on the ground, I mean, your brother's under there to take care of them, you know. First time I've been underground and stuff, everything, I mean, First time I got in that elevator, good time. I mean, it's kind of scary at first and everything, and after being underground, I kind of enjoy it now. I mean, it's the best thing to do. So. Uh, what do you like most about coal mining? The work. I mean, some of the work's kind of hard sometimes, and I mean, you got someone's got to do it. I mean, go under there and get that coal underground and take it out of there. Coal mining is a tradition here in Boone County. And you know, we feel like it's going to continue for, for at least another 50 years. When I was a curly head baby, my daddy set me down on his knee, saying, Son, go to school, you learn your letters. Now don't you be no dusty minor boy like me. Oh, I was born and raised at the mouth of the Hazard Holler, where the coal cars roll and rumble past my door. And now they stand in a rusty row of all empty, because yeah, don't stop here anymore. We grew up in a mining community then, which was a coal mining community we called Coal Camp. Although today, coal mining is a very celebrated industry and is a way of life for many people in West Virginia, it came from a past of exploitation, turmoil, and bloodshed. As the industrial age swept across the nation in the mid to late 1800s, mining entrepreneurs saw opportunity beneath the coal-rich mountains of West Virginia. West Virginia quickly transitioned from an agricultural state to an industrial state after mining companies began to buy the land off of the state's farmers. The rise and spread of the coal industry in West Virginia led to a decline in mountain agriculture. Former West Virginia farmers then left their farms for the higher wages of the industrial economy. These West Virginians, along with thousands of European immigrants, became part of an economic system that was controlled by the coal industry and the companies that ran it. The relationship between miners and companies can be characterized as nothing less than exploitative and controlling as the miners became dependent on their wage income and dependent on the companies. In West Virginia, miners and their families lived in towns known as coal camps or company towns that were built and ran by the companies. These company towns were complete with company houses, a company school, a company post office, a company doctor, and a company store. In the company towns, houses were distributed in an orderly manner reflecting the economic and social hierarchy. Miners lived in lower quality houses often located at the edge of town, while mine administrators lived in better houses often on slopes that overlooked the community or in the center of town. Workers were paid in an exclusive company currency called script, which could be used nowhere else but at the company store. Uh, sort of interesting to talk about the script, and we've got a whole pile of it here. Uh, so this stuff was the money the coal companies gave out, and you could only spend it at the store of the mine you worked in. 
Uh, I think New River Coal is most interesting. This particular coal mine uh, company had, we think about 16 mines, 16 company stores, and 16 different sets of money. If you worked at the Whipple Mine, you got paid in Whipple Script, and you could not spend it at any other company store, even within the same company. Uh, from the windows of the Whipple Company store, you could see two other stores that the same company ran, but they had completely different currencies. That enabled the company to know exactly what each miner had in his pocket at all times, what he was spending it on, and if by some chance he accumulated a little bit on the plus side, then that could be adjusted. In certain coal camps, the companies hired armed security agents to keep the towns and their population in order. Early on, the coal companies, as they basically swallowed West Virginia, created their own municipalities, created their own towns, the classic company towns. They owned the church, they had the school, uh, the stores, the, the company stores. They actually had their own money. Uh, at one point in West Virginia, there were roughly 400 separate sets of currency, 400 different types of money. I'll give you some idea of how widespread the, the whole thing was. And uh, so the companies absolutely controlled the miners. It was virtually a slave system. Uh, Dr. Teresa Burris down at Radford University, chair of their Appalachian Studies program, has done a lot of work looking at slave culture. And she and I have done some work with the coal company towns. It's becoming extremely common to look at it. It's the same. Slave culture and culture in the West Virginia coal towns are the same. And uh, a lot of folks will try to, to pass off the company towns as somehow benign, you know, the benevolent despot or something. And that's simply fraudulent. They were, they were harsh places. Um. What was the relationship between the residents of the coal camps and the company store with the company? Well, back in those early years, the coal company store was looked on as a place furnished by the coal company. Bought everything from the company so store. Whatever it all come out of the company store, they would frown very heavy on you if you got enough that you went out outside the company store to match for someone bought a dollar or two worth of They'd thing. get mad? And they, they didn't like that. They wanted you to spend it with them with script. Right. And it was very difficult. You had to be very careful if you had a few dollars and maybe a little pay and if you went to Madison or somewhere and you spent a few dollars down there. That was kind of a no-no back then with the coal companies. Mm -hmm. They didn't want that to happen. They wanted you to spend it in their store. I have a neighbor down in Scarborough. I've got an old company house down there just a half a mile from the Whipple store. And my neighbor tells the story of his dad who at one point as a young man uh, bought a dress, had a store-bought dress for a gal that was getting married, and the boss found out. So when the, his daddy went to work the next day, the uh, boss says, well, I see you've got enough money for a store-bought dress. Come on over here, Bob, we're going to let you dig in a rock for a while. These boys need some more money and they need a little help. So basically he's saying these other miners need to have some money, and you've obviously got too much if you're able to buy a store-bought dress, a real money dress. So they put the guy digging rocking in the mud for a few days. And pretty soon you learn that uh, you don't go buying store-bought dresses. You buy only what's in the company store and you only ask for script. You don't ask for real money. Because if you ask for American money, they'll give it to you and then you find yourself digging rock. And of course, you don't get paid for rock, you get paid for coal. So it was an absolute system of control. Not only did miners work long hours for low wages, they were also subjected to terribly dangerous working conditions. Between 1890 and 1912, West Virginia had a higher mine death rate than any other state. In response to poor work conditions and low wages, coal miners in West Virginia began to organize labor unions. These unions demanded such things as fair wages, alternatives to company stores, an end to the practice of using mine guards, and the right to organize. From the beginning, coal operators were strongly against these unions and went to great lengths to stop such organization. The tension between union organizers and coal operators culminated in the West Virginia Mine Wars in which blood was shed between the two parties on several occasions, most notably during the Paint Creek, Cabin Creek Strike of 1912, the Matewan Massacre, and the Battle of Blair Mountain, which resulted in over 100 deaths and became the largest armed uprising in the United States since the Civil War. Things have improved dramatically. But the latter years, we had a strong United Mine Workers Union that I worked under the banner of. As time went on in the 20th century, 
labor unions such as the United Mine Workers of America succeeded in making coal a unionized industry. Miners won their long fight for mine safety regulations, fair wages, independence from the company town system, and collective bargaining power. The giving of company scrip became outlawed as company towns faded away. Today, we see more cooperation between coal miners and companies than we did in the early 20th century. I've been a member of the United Mine Workers for 73 years. Wow. That's a good one. I'm very proud of all this. Coal mining has always been known as one of the most dangerous occupations in the world. In West Virginia, Miners are a respected group of people because of the great sacrifices that they make for their families as they go underground each day. More information coming into Fox News Channel about the mine explosion in Mont Cole, West Virginia. It's being called one of the worst U.S. mining disasters in recent history, and more tragedy just continues to we're roll in, in as that hour. death toll it is continues. It's very sad goes. news out of here. Well, so far, we've only heard of 25 dead and four missing. That no survivors found yet. There are family members milling about here and there. Um, everyone in the local community seems to be very sad about the development. It seems to be a very tight-knit community. Um, the Upper Big Branch mining explosion happened two years ago. Um, it was a really big scare, especially for Boone County and Raleigh County area. There were 29 miners that were killed. Um, a boy that I went to high school with was in that, um, and he was killed. He was 26. Um, my mother and I were driving to town one day the day that it happened and saw all these ambulances and minor rescues. Um, we actually went towards our house and through the area where my father and my brother work. Um, it was really scary. It wasn't their mind, but it was still affected all the families that are around. Did you give me a couple of examples of some dangers that you do face every day in the mine? Well, when I worked underground, it, it's always the top. You, you worry about the top in low coal uh, falling down on you. You know, you're mining underneath that mountain. You worry about water coming in on you. Uh, if you if you mine below a creek level, you're always going to get methane gas, which is uh, natural gas, and, and you have to worry about your, your methane. So it's, it's a dangerous, dangerous job sometimes. I mean, but you just got to watch out for what, you, what happens to you and stuff. And I had an accident back June 29th, uh, 2011. Um, next thing you knew is it just like blinking an eye. I got my arm caught between the roll, return, return roller on the bottom, the belt. Got sucked in there and I, I didn't know what happened. I mean, I, it happened like that. I blinked an eye and they called the ambulance and came and get me and stuff with you. Probably by far the worst pain I've had in my life. I can see uh, second, third degree burns on my arm. Yeah, but I can show you some of the scores and stuff, anything like that. I got the mine there and wrapped up. Good. I had to have skin graft done here, around my shoulder here, and it burnt my whole entire arm all the way down through here. Down my wrist, my wrist right here, and everything like that. I had to have skin graft done all that. And, but, but, you know, I just. Glad I could have been dead that day, and to know if I'd be back doing her again, stuff or anything. Um, growing up in a coal miner family was scary. I remember my dad used to work midnights, and that was probably the best for him because he was able to be home with me and my brothers. Um, that I can remember nights my mom would stay up until he'd get home. Um, then as I got older, I realized how dangerous it was. Um, all my family work in the coal mines, even my uncles and cousins are working there as well. So it's always scary when something happens and you don't know what mine it is, you just know it's something that's happened. Uh, the, the, the dangers are always there, the equipment, it's close quarters, the equipment is loud, uh, it's a fast moving pace uh, and hard work. You have to be on your toes all the time when you work underground. But everybody said you're stupid to get back and pull my stuff out there. What happened to you? And, you know, I'm back to one now. And it's like I was out for two months and stuff and everything. And I love it. I mean, I go down there every day and do what I have to do and work, work what I have to do and make the boss man happy every day.
In the year 2009, West Virginia produced over 144 million tons of coal. This coal has helped generate 99% of the state's electricity and through the coal severance tax has added approximately $214 million to the state's economy. More than 60,000 West Virginia families depend on coal mining for their livelihoods as the coal industry directly employs about 28,000 people in 537 coal mines. Well, coal mines, about 60% of uh, electricity in the United States is stuff everything. So it's pretty important stuff everything like that. You're down on the ground, you get that coal out there and keep the lights on. For every one coal miner down here in southern West Virginia, uh, there is 10 other people that are working in other industries that supports the coal industry. You know, mining is so important in Boone County. We employ more coal miners in Boone County than any other county in West Virginia. Uh, hands down, we have over 4,000 people that's employed in the coal mines, and I think the next county has like 1,500. So. But if you stay down here, uh, the paydays, will eventually get you, if you want to have stuff for your family, you'll get a job in the mines. How important do you think uh, coal mining is to the state of West Virginia? Coal mining is very, very necessary in West Virginia. It's a coal mining state. It should be done. Coal was what got our country through the wars. We provided the electricity for, for the industry. Mining will always be a tradition in Boone County uh, in West Virginia. It's, it's the biggest source of tax revenue in the state. It comes back to each local municipality and each local county receives a, 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 what's called a coal severance uh, monies that uh, our county commission has really put it to good use in water projects, uh, a lot of infrastructure, bridges, roads. 93% uh, of the people in, in our county have public water and that's that's unheard of in, in a lot of a lot of areas. Uh, I think we're probably second in the state in, as far as public water for our citizens. Uh, besides the coal industry, if, if we were gone, then the machine shops would go, uh, the electric shops would go, the high line crews would go, and you would basically be a poverty area. But the average coal miner, they'll make in the neighborhood of eighty, ninety thousand dollars a year. Coal is, is not only West Virginia, coal is Moon County, and it's just you know, it goes hand in hand that uh, coal, if it wasn't for coal, then we might as well turn the lights off and, and we could leave. If we don't get industry going in America, made in America, bought in America, made by American coal and coal miners, we will become a second class nation over the whole United States. So what is the coal mining heritage? The coal mining heritage can be summed up as a tradition that was started by miners over 100 years ago and is still proudly carried out by coal miners today. From generation to generation, the coal mining heritage has been passed down and preserved through celebratory events such as the West Virginia Coal Festival. There is no denying that coal and West Virginia have a very special relationship that has developed throughout their long history together. Coal miners have gone through their share of struggles as well as their share of triumphs. All of this has contributed to the coal mining heritage and miners will always be proud to be a part of the industry that has helped shape the past, present, and future of West Virginia.